welcome Acting Assistant Secretary and Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Office of Nuclear Energy. It's Dr. Catherine Huff, representing the new administration, and she was the Blue Water Assistant Professor with the National Center for Supercomputing Applications. So she is, again, leading into the high-tech ends of the system. When I read her bio, she has all of these things about being able to do things with SciPython and the applications of digital technology technology to nuclear power. So many of these things are near and dear to my heart. Thank you very kindly for agreeing to speak to us. Of course, I'm pleased to be with all of you. It's really lovely to see uh, so many names from my previous life as an ordinary assistant professor. Um, I see students, I see faculty, I see all of the Oak Ridge scientists and other scientists that I am fond of. Um, as some of you may know, I did in that previous life have a research interest in molten salt reactors. And so, of course, I have previously benefited from this very workshop uh, as a young person. And so, um, anyway, I uh, am now in this position of being able to um, lead the Office of Nuclear Energy and the Department of Energy. And I think it's, it's I'm, you know, I'm biased, but I think this is maybe one of the most exciting times one could possibly be um, involved in this office and in the Office of Nuclear Energy and the Department of Energy. I'm feeling like a lot of support uh, from the administration around our main goals, one of which is building advanced reactors. My three main priorities in this position are to keep the existing reactors open, and Christine covered that really well. Uh, thank you, Christine. And to build advanced reactors and to manage the spent nuclear fuel. You know, the building of advanced reactors, of course, has a lot in it. You know, our office is really supporting all stages of development to bring new advanced reactor systems to the market, really bring them to commercialization. Um, you know, <laughs> Dr. McCarthy mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of those demonstration and risk reduction awardees, the ARC-20 awardees, among them, there are a lot of molten salt related activities. Not only is there the MCRE risk reduction award for, uh, for uh, Southern Company and Terra Power in which they're planning to build a sort of next generation MSRE, but with a molten chloride salt, that activity, you know, of course is really core to this group and your missions here in molten salt reactor space, but also, you know, uh, Kairos has a clean salt pebble bed reactor design that we're supporting through that program. And many of the reactor designs being envisioned for this sort of near-term future utilize molten salts as energy storage devices. And as we uh, look towards decarbonizing direct heat applications, which of course was already mentioned, those are going to be critical to the president's goals of decarbonizing our, our economy completely by 2050. Now, our administration's goals here in terms of emissions is that you know we're really serious about um, achieving net zero emissions by 2050, but the you know electrical infrastructure, we need to get to zero by 2035. And so those demonstrations, um, both the advanced reactor demonstrations, Terra Powers, Natrium Reactor, and the X Energy XC100, both of those um, will be deployed in this decade. You know, the new scale reactor is coming online this decade as well. And we have a lot of risk reduction awardees that are, you know, right behind them in terms of this uh, capability to reduce their risk and bring them into a commercial space. I'm really excited for it because, of course, my research, as I said, was in the context of advanced nuclear reactors and their fuel cycles, obviously from a computational side, as David mentioned. Um, you know, um, but it, it holds a very special place in my heart, this kind of research that you all are doing and talking about. A few things I'd just like to sort of briefly mention is that, you know, as we think about the deployment of these devices, um, you know, there, there's a whole pipeline of not only reactors, but also fuel cycles, supply chains, and workforce that need to be developed in order for us to succeed, you know, um, in addition to building and deploying them, the fuel that's going to be required to operate them is equally important. And, you know, we're looking at multiple pathways, for example, to produce high assay, low enriched uranium that's going to be required by a lot of these devices. Um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, you know, has recently cleared Centris Energy to produce that HALU, you know, but our big priority here is to make sure that components and work for humans are both also available uh, for advanced reactor technology. So I hope that's a topic um, here today. I know that 
a lot of the exciting parts of thinking about molten salt reactors are in the basic sciences of understanding the neutronics, how they couple to the thermal hydraulics, where are the delayed neutron precursors floating around, what about the corrosion in these systems? You know, those important questions are essential to bring in these designs from concept to commercialization, but so too are the components, the fuels, the people, and the sort of deployment strategies that are gonna be necessary to commercialize them. And in the context in which we're very serious about decarbonizing, it's going to be absolutely essential that molten salt reactor developers like yourselves begin to sort of, and I know many of you are already doing this, uh, you know, really uh, enable yourselves to open your minds to consider the big picture because I think we're now on the precipice. You know, you've this community has brought these kinds of reactors to the forefront in a place where, you know, they're, uh, there is a potential for commercializing them, but the, the really big lifts outside of our neutronics and thermal hydraulics and experimental salt chemistry, um, all of those big lifts are still to be made. So, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that, um, that the research and development leads to demonstration. Uh, and, you know, I see hundreds of people here on this call ready to help with that process. And so I I hope that whether molten salt reactors are old old news to you and you've thought of every problem I've just stated, or if it's all brand new and you're still trying to parse what's a clean salt and a solid fuel versus a liquid fueled molten salt reactor and which ones are fast and which ones are slow and what's a fluoride and what's a chloride. Um, I hope that all of you will sort of see a place for yourselves in, in envisioning that larger supply chain of people and components and fuels and everything that's going to be required to commercialize these things. Uh, you know, I, I'm often guilty of, you know, working at the margins of building software tools that are useful for uh, asking important questions about niche, uh, niche issues in these kinds of possible future reactor designs. But I think we're now at a place where we should all really buckle down and get engineering with it and get very practical and I think we have organizations like GAIN and the National Laboratories ready to support you so um, anyway uh, those are mostly my comments I think you know if there's nothing else you take away from here I think the thing that is important for you this community to hear is that this administration President Biden's government the secretary uh, Secretary Granholm's Department of Energy and my office of nuclear energy are all really committed to seeing an important role for advanced nuclear technologies in the future of our decarbonization path. And that we're very serious about those goals that we've set. They're not just lip service. It's really code red for humanity right now. And the, the importance of fighting climate change as a part of this administration's goals cannot be understated. We are very serious and there is a recognition that advanced nuclear reactors will play a key role in solving this challenge for us. So. You know, I know that you have a lot of really exciting things to discuss, important salt chemistry and corrosion activities, experiments around not just salts, but components and steels and pipes and pumps and systems and simulations, neutronics, thermal hydraulics, et cetera. So I hope to I hope to pop in periodically throughout the day when I have some breaks in my meetings. And I, I hope you won't be startled if I'm listening. Um, but I'm I'm really enthused by this kind of activity. So it'll be a fun blast from the past to join you a little bit this afternoon and tomorrow. So I hope you have a wonderful workshop and uh, thank you for the great lead in. Um, there were a lot of things I would have liked to say that you already said. So thank you so much for doing so. And I'll uh, stop there.